I am Madison Timmons. I'm Chris Susi. And we're paranormal specialists who live in the most haunted city on earth, Savannah, Georgia. Every day is Halloween in our line of work, so join us as we spin true tales of haunts, murders, and disturbing Savannah history. I'm Madison. I'm Chris. And, and welcome, welcome to, to the most haunted city the, on earth. Bop, bop, boom. Hello, and welcome back to another episode of the most haunted city on earth. My name is Madison Timmons. I'm Chris Susie. And today we are joined and by- And I'm Alice Riley. I was about to introduce oh, you. I'm sorry. I was about to set this up for you, and you just went, shoom. <laughs> it's okay. Yes, we're here today with Alice Riley, Savannah's favorite spirit. Give me back my baby. <laughs> Just kidding, it's JT. What? <laughs> ah, I was fooled. Give me back my bonnet. <laughs> Old man rivers. <laughs> <laughs> All right, cool. But yes, so today we are going to be talking about one of Savannah's favorite spirits and stories in general, Alice Riley, uh, the spirit of Wright Square. So um, you want to go ahead and just dive on into it? Yeah, absolutely. Tell me the story. What happened? It is like I like I obviously I know the story because we have a whole show, uh, you know, on it. Um, but uh, the listeners need to know the story. So, and I res- I uh, represent the listeners' voices. So yes. yes, tell me the story. I'm super interested. So Alice Riley was a Irish indentured servant. Um, she came here in 1733 with a man who it is up to debate whether he was her husband, her lover, or whatever he was to her. But she came with this man named Richard White. And when they came to Savannah, they had to work for a certain amount of time because that's what you did as an indentured servant. So they were purchased by General Oglethorpe, who was the city founder and also the wealthiest citizen. He actually owned a cattle farm over on Hutchinson Island, which is where the Weston Hotel is, for those of you who have visited Savannah. It's right across the river. It's pretty much all there is besides the convention center. So, uh, there's, golf, there's, golf, there's a golf course. Well, yeah, there's a golf course, too. But racetrack. That's, yeah. And a racetrack. Okay, well, apparently there's more to it than just a hotel. It's a sliver of land between Savannah and South Carolina. Yes. That's exactly. <laughs> yes, exactly. Um, so Hutchinson Island had the cattle farm that was owned by General Oglethorpe, and it was being kind of uh, attended to by a man named William Wise. Now, William Wise was probably one of the worst people you could work for in Savannah. He was very abusive to every single one of his servants in pretty much every form of the word, but especially Alice. He kind of had this attraction to Alice because she was very young. She was also super pretty. She had a really sweet face with long, fiery red hair, And William Wise kind of made Alice his main servant that attended to him. I hate Willie Wise. We all do. Don't worry. You guys will too in just a second when I tell you about what he did. But basically, she was the one who was forced to bathe him every night. William Wise allegedly had this long hair that he didn't want to um, cut. So it would get very matted. It'd get dirty. It was just gross. Well, and of the period... Uh, it was very popular to wear powdered wigs. And many people will add to the story that he would style his hair like the powdered wigs and then powder his actual head. And she would have to wash Mm -hmm. out this powder, which was just this white, gray, gook, uh, pasty uh, horror show. And she had to do this like every single night, mind you. And But eventually, William Wise would take... Um, it to the next step, and he would sexually assault Alice Riley. Alice uh, would become pregnant with William Wise's child, and this outraged her and Richard. They were both so infuriated with this man. They just had had enough, and they decided to take matters into their own hands, quite literally. So one oh, evening, yeah. as Alice was bathing William Wise, she grabbed him by the hair and pulled his head backwards into the pail of wash water um, that she was using to wash his hair. And Richard sprang on him and started choking him with his neckerchief uh, because that was also very period accurate for them to wear a little scarf around their neck. So he would choke him as Alice continued to drown him 
And eventually, they would drown him in his own filth, essentially, uh, which I think was a very appropriate way for the man to go. But nonetheless, so they went running, and it is kind of up to debate because this did happen in 1735, I believe. Um, So this was kind of ill-documented of whether or not they went to Isle of Hope. Some people say that they went running that way. Some people like to say they went to Savannah's older, uglier sister, Charleston, but um, (laughs) (laughs) just a little dig on Charleston. No, Charleston's great, but regardless, um, it's kind of debatable of which way they went running, but regardless, they were caught and they were both sentenced to death by hanging in Wright Square, which used to be the gallows in the hanging square. So, basically, Richard would go first. He would end up hanging for three days before succumbing to the hangman's noose, which was very common back in that time period because uh, hangings and executions were entertainment for people. It was literally like the family event. They're like, oh, you want to go see the hanging in uh, Wright Square or whatever it is? Uh, And so they would sometimes pay the executioner to extend the process. So if you... That's brutal. Oh, yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> it was not a nice time to live, to no. be quite honest. But Well, and they, they always say that, you know, one of the first structures built in Savannah was the gallows because Savannah was going to be very serious about law enforcement, very serious mm-hmm. about infringement. Uh, so the gallows was the tallest thing <laughs> in the town, uh, and it was the, uh, the center you know, because the uh, right square represented, you know, the town center as far as everybody was concerned. Okay. Yeah. And so, um, basically, they would add a couple knots if they wanted the head to come clean off in the hanging. But if you wanted to extend it, what you did was you took away a few knots from the uh, set amount that you had to have for a proper hanging. And so that's what they did to Richard. So they literally let him struggle with a half-broken neck for three days. And the law stated that you had to hang until declared dead. So, yeah, it it was brutal. But Alice, because she was with child, she was being marched down to the gallows, and she proclaimed to everyone that she was with child. So they stayed her execution, allowed her to give birth. And actually, during that time, she tried to convince General Oglethorpe that the child was his. And um, in hopes that it would save her or at least save the child. Mm. And so they allowed her to give birth and she gave birth to her son, James, which she named after General Oglethorpe. Another last chance to try to save the baby, but um, didn't work out. So there is also, because of the time difference from now and then, there is a lot of speculation of how long she got to stay with the child. Some people said it was as little as two hours, and some people say it was as long as like two weeks. Um, but there, she wasn't allowed to have her uh, be with her child for very long. And so pretty much she was marched down to the gallows, and she would become the first woman in the state of Georgia to be executed by hanging. So that's kind of her history. Isn't she the, isn't she the first woman to be executed ever? Like, in, like, like in, by George, in Georgia? I, I don't mean, believe she's the first well, woman. Well, in Georgia, I, I don't think really Georgia existed until Savannah was founded. Yeah. So, I, so, yes. So, technically, Georgia, yes. <laughs> yes. But, but uh, yeah, I realize that we've had a long history of killing women. Uh, you know, yeah. Witch hunts were, 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 were a oh, real yeah. thing. And, and we definitely... We, Not we, we, we don't have a great yeah. record of treating women well in this country. Mm-hmm including today, so. <laughs> yeah. the, um, but just for, like, a proper execution, she would become the first. Mm-hmm. Ah. Um, Convicted by a court of law. Yeah. Um, and so... And really, worth noting, the story has been polished and repolished and polished again. Absolutely. Uh, but the record of the execution is our main uh, source, is, 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 is the concrete evidence. We know that that happened. Everything else is... Uh, kind of suppositions and and stories and uh, accounts from the time, but maybe not. You know, yeah. so it's it's fun because there's a lot of of different variations on the story, yeah. and they, you know, I, I've heard the 
you know, the baby was born and they, they pulled it from her arms oh, and, yeah. and, and, and literally marched her to the gallows right after birth, right after which birth. is That's very dramatic. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, it, it seems unlikely. Yeah, <laughs> you think? I, you think yeah. it, it, it seems unlikely. Well, I mean, the same the same city that let a guy hang for three days. That like, was for entertainment purposes. Yeah, but this that's what I'm saying. Wouldn't you have to think about how they thought back then? Babies were like, you know, you don't you don't kill children right. necessarily. Um, so they're gonna want her to give the child what it needs to possibly sustain it for after she's gone. Yeah, sure. Yeah. So I mean, and and yeah, we don't have any. We don't. We don't know. We don't know the the, the things, but we do know th- these details have become very yeah. solidified as to what we do know about Alice Riley. Yeah, I see. Yeah. But like I said, it is such a long time ago, and we, we've talked about this before. We're what, document- when was it? What year again? Seventeen thirty-five. Seventeen thirty-five. Um, and so the documentation of this. Think about it. It's 1735. If the paper still exists, that's a miracle in itself sure. um, from that long of a period ago. But a lot of times it is very difficult for us to get those very minute details that right. wouldn't necessarily be documented. Right. Sure. So. Now, does she, she still haunts a particular square. And, uh, like, how, how strong of a spirit is she? She's a very, very strong spirit because she has one goal in her afterlife, which is she wants to find her child. Again, yes. she wants to be reconnected with her son. And think about how intense a mother's love is now. Oh, yeah. Like, when you're alive versus, like, a mother who is literally torn away from her newborn something that's meant to be such a strong attachment to that child. There, there is a natural instinct that mothers have, you know, to mama bear, to protect, to, to sure. take care of, to um, nurture. And so it, in the afterlife, she has made it kind of her mission to find this spirit, which has given her a ton of energy. I see. And has caused her to be somewhat frightening to be quite honest because yeah, I actually my first encounter of the story came from uh, one of the tour bus drivers was telling me that when he was a kid in the 60s he was uh, he went to the corner store to get some candy and was walking after dark through Wright Square and a woman grabbed him and shook him and was like have you seen my child <gasps> and he so he, he, he prized loose runs home and oh tells his mother and his mother's like you just encountered Alice Riley. No and way. And so he's telling me this story. I'm like, who's Alice Riley? And, you know, locked and loaded as a Savannah, he knew, you know, how to, how to really sell that story. Yeah. Um, and so you hear all kinds of things. Like if you walk through uh, Wright Square pushing a stroller mm-hmm. or a baby, you'll feel like this cold come over you, which is a welcome relief in Savannah. Absolutely. <laughs> like, thank you, Alice. <laughs> yeah, you, you, you'll walk through or, or you'll see out of the corner of your eyes a woman coming after you or you'll hear mm-hmm. the voice oh. of a woman Woman calling out. Um, if a pregnant women mm-hmm. oftentimes will find themselves harassed walking through the square with no prior knowledge of Goodness. this ghost story Absolutely. or anything. Um, Even kids, I've yeah. heard. Oh, um, sure. Yeah, recently actually, I um, met a group that took our tour, and one of it was like a, quite a few teenagers and like a couple moms that were on the tour and whatnot. And they're like, yeah, we took a walking tour the other night. And all the girls said that there was this woman screaming in Wright Square. And it was right before the tour guide was going to talk about Alice Riley. And they're like, do you guys like, they're like, do you guys hear like that woman screaming? Like, do, do we, should we help her? Cause she's screaming about a baby or whatever. It's like something wrong. And the moms are like, we don't hear what you're talking about. But Ooh. all of the girls, all the teenage girls, they heard it. And then the tour guide was like, well, you're probably hearing Alice Riley. So it's even kids. The tour guide's like, I'm getting a big old tip tonight. Exactly. Boy. They're like, they brought me Alice Riley. Ooh. Yeah. That's so funny. But there's a, now, there's a photo. There there's is. a photo. There's lots of photos, actually. But there's yeah. that yeah. photo. Yeah. You know the photo I'm talking yes. about. of like the blurry photo yeah, of we'll, Alice. Yeah, we'll insert it. You can yeah. find it on Google. Um, but but, the, uh, but that photo, Chris, do you know anything about that photo? Do you know if it's real? Do you know if it was staged? The problem with photos is it's, it's, a, it's a very compelling photo. But 
you know, there's just no way to know. You yeah. know, I, and I would not put it. I, I, it's I'm, a woman in period clothes running. Yes, exactly. Right? Yeah, that's but it. But this is there's at least. <laughs> I was gonna say there's at least three tours that utilize yeah. costumed characters. Yeah. You know, and so it's very difficult to to say one way or the other. Um, yeah. One of my favorite little aspects that they would tell about Alice Riley is that because she had to wash. William Wise's hair, she will pull the Spanish moss out of the trees. Oh. And that's why Wright Square doesn't have Spanish moss it in doesn't. its trees. It yeah. doesn't. It doesn't, y'all. Well, what's really interesting, uh, and because technically neither does um, Johnson Square. Yeah. <laughs> Johnson Square doesn't have it. And people say that Johnson Square doesn't have uh, Spanish moss in his trees because um, Nathaniel, Nathaniel Green, <laughs> Nathaniel like Green Spanish didn't moss. like Spanish And it's true, he didn't. He actually cut all the limbs off the trees on his plantation because he wanted to get rid of the Spanish moss wow. and then died of heat stroke because oh. there was no shade on his plantation. <laughs> but I digress. Back to Alice Riley. The interesting thing about Alice Riley is there is oftentimes some Spanish moss, which is more compelling to me. Because where there's a little Spanish moss, there should be a lot of Spanish moss. Yes. Spanish moss mm -hmm. is very pervasive. So if, if it's growing anywhere in the square, it should be on every tree, but it is not. It does seem as though someone is grooming those trees to not have Spanish moss. So you'll see like little patches of it, but that doesn't make any sense. Spanish moss is, yeah. is very, you know, it's a tree virus, basically. Yeah. <laughs> It'll when go I, yeah. when, I, when I first heard that, I was like, I got to check that out. And then I went because, you know, I mean, there's Spanish moss all over these trees mm -hmm. here, you know. Uh, and I went to Wright Square and I looked up and by golly, if there are, there is no Spanish moss to be found. And I was like, shut up. One of my favorite um, theories of why there's no Spanish moss in that square is because of the fact that it was the gallows and there was this iron in the blood well actually or I've heard that uh, Spanish moss cannot grow where innocent blood mm -hmm. has been shed and I really like that theory that's a, that's a good theory because there is there, there, I'm sure there are quite a few people who were murdered yeah. yeah basically by the law in Savannah because they pissed off the wrong elitist in the city or they um, stole from someone and they got hanged or even if they're just accused of a crime they did not commit, it happened all the time. And um, I, I like that theory, you know, since that was a place where so much blood was shed, yeah. maybe that is why. And right on that square, of course, was the first official burial ground of mm -hmm. Savannah. And... Um, my very first ghostly experience in Savannah was in the basement, which was the giant hole left by <laughs> the removal of the of the of the graveyard. Um, there's really? a yes, yeah. there's a long stretch of building right there on Wright Square uh, where the plaque that reads this was the um, the the site of the first cemetery in Savannah. In Hopefully. the back of that same building was the York Lane Theater. It was one of the first places that I really got involved with in Savannah, Georgia. And it was City Lights Theater. The York Lane Theater was in York Lane. So it's behind that b building. And uh, they were doing a Halloween uh, haunted house. Wow. And so they, uh, they would take us in the basement. Now, the basement of this building is insane. It looks like somebody's losing a Jenga game. Like all of the what? brick uh, columns are like barely holding up the, and we're like, is it safe to be down here? And they're like, yeah, don't worry about it. And so <laughs> we're down there in the dark uh, and I'm wearing a uh, Michael Myers mask and my friend is wearing a uh, hockey mask and we've got, you know, plastic uh, butcher knives and we're waiting for people to come downstairs and we're like, boogity, boogity. And, uh, and we're just <laughs> having a good time, but we're down in the basement and we hear in the distance, the sound of a woman in distress, just this, ah, 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 and we're just like, do you hear that? And so oh, we're Lord. in the dark, and we think that maybe one of the guests got past us and tripped and fell, because it really sounded like somebody was hurt. Oh, boy. And so we like start walking towards the sound, but it, we're walking further away from the one light we had, and now we're like in the shadows trying to see, and uh, my friend's... Uh, Hockey mask was like glow in the dark, so he's like holding it in front of him, trying to see. Because we're like, "Ma'am, yeah. are you okay? Ma'am, are you all right?" And we're getting closer and closer to what sounds like, you know, a person right on the floor. And we, right next to it, we just get this big whoosh, this huge sensation of 
movement all around us. And so we go screaming, running up the stairs. Now, my favorite part about this story is people had just bought tickets to go to the haunted house and coming, they're coming down the stairs and Jason Voorhees and Michael Myers <laughs> screaming at the top of their lungs are running right at them up the stairs. Those people got their money's worth that night. Absolutely. So yeah, yeah. Like, not knowing what was going on in that basement, we would later what find out. What building again? What building is that? So it's um, what what is it? It's now? where the uh, Right Square Chocolatier is, ah, and so it's that building. Yeah, that building. Okay. And so yeah, it is. Yo. It is crazy haunted. That uh, that basement. I wish I knew who who, whole, who owned it. Now. Just all of that is just yeah. this yeah. massive and vortex was, of haunt. It was weird because when you're down there and you turn the, all the lights on, it's just as creepy with all the lights on as it is with the yeah, lights yeah. off. You're down there, and it kind of looks like there's still dirt ground in certain areas of the basement and you're just like so this used to be a graveyard now it's just a big hole in the ground (laughs) yeah we need to we need to do like uh we need to do an investigation just uh, like of right square yeah we need to just go through right square absolutely i I think we should i think we should do that that should be one of the ones we do this month well and i think it's interesting that you talk about that particular area of right square because i remember and this is probably from like 15 years ago, a ghost hunting show that did a ser- uh, like a, uh, an episode on Alice Riley. And I remember watching this when I lived in Florida, and they investigated in the gl- uh, glass shop that's oh, on. Oh, yeah, right on top of uh, that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I think it's funny because I remember them saying, Alice Riley comes in and breaks our glass things inside well, the building. it's sitting right on top of uh, uh, a cemetery, and one of the big things about that cemetery is they moved all the bodies to Colonial Park Cemetery, but they moved the bodies before they moved the stones and the stones were separated from the bodies Bruh. and so they ended up just putting the stones against a wall because they didn't know oh my what gosh. bodies belong to what stone that is so disorganized and that's that, so well, savannah yeah, it is so savannah <laughs> so savannah <laughs> and if you if you invest at all in the causes of hauntings you know disrespect to the dead is right at the top you 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 uh, do any disrespect to a grave you're yeah. going to get haunted, and mm-hmm. that I can't even imagine something you know separating Jeez. a body from its stone and then not reuniting them. That's going to cause some some residual stuff. Oh, absolutely, yeah. I just always remember thinking because, like, at that point, I had visited Savannah and I got very interested in Savannah's ghostly history because I've always loved the paranormal, and so I remember. Thinking when I watched that episode, I was like, wait, didn't Alice Riley want her baby? Like, why is she breaking glass? She wouldn't break glass. That makes no sense. But it's interesting hearing that that building is sitting on top of what is now the open pit. And I'm like, oh, that 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 makes a lot more sense. Right outside that glass store is the placard is the sign it's on the wall and we never would have even known this except they opened like a sandwich shop right there and they put roly poly uh, 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 no that's no. on the other end of oh, the that's so on this, the, was, yeah, this was yeah. a long time ago okay. um so there's like a little cafe table and me and my friend we we're sitting at the cafe table directly under the placard and we just kind of casually looked up and it was like oh my god because we yeah. were in the hole <laughs> You know, we were we were in the ground where they used to bury people, and it's like ah. <laughs> <laughs> so um, when it comes to Alice Riley, she wants her baby. Is there any way that we could actually appease her and give her her baby to release her so she can you know go to wherever she's supposed to go? I mean, it's not. That's simple. It's not like when you have a brooding chicken and you give it a ceramic egg and it's like, this is your baby. Wow, that's a perfect analogy you know? of what I'm asking. Yeah. <laughs> that is crazy. It's, you know, so you can give a chicken its ceramic egg and be like, this is your baby. And it's like, okay, yeah, this is my baby. It doesn't work that way with spirits. There's that. And even more so is even in reuniting, if you could in any way reunite her with the spirit, you're also dealing with an injustice mm-hmm. with... Uh, a, a lingering sense of injustice, which also has it, it, it creates its own brand of spirit. So even though it's manifesting itself as that singular need to be with the child, mm-hmm. it is also standing as an accusation against a society that oh. would kill her, separate her from her child. You know that that in her in her most desperate hour left her 
bereft and alone. So, you know, there's a lot of elements to that particular haunting or that gotcha. particular story that would not necessarily be solved with the with with just the reuniting. It would um it may serve to put her at peace, but it wouldn't serve to put the sensation and feeling at, at, at peace. And there's also a lot of questions, too, what happened to James, the baby. Sure. Because some people, um, there, there really wasn't any documentation mm-hmm. of it. And that happened a lot with orphans, you sure. know. Um, basically, for one, it's very possible that he died shortly after oh, she passed away because if, she, if he was a newborn yeah yeah he would have needed his mother to survive and infant mortality at that time was outrageously high anyways but some people believe that he did live to like somewhat of an older childhood and things like that yeah, some people say that he was whisked away to charleston yeah some people say that yeah you know, that he died you know in his early childhood years hmm. um and the chances of, even if he did survive, ever being told who his mother was, very slim. Oh, know? yeah. Well, yeah. they're not going to tell yeah. you, like, your mother was a, a murderer. <laughs> you know, it's like, they're not going to tell a kid that. Right. They're going to be like, you were born an orphan. Sorry. Yeah, or if they yeah. even tell them yeah, that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and so, it, that is a big question of if James is even still around as a spirit. Right. So you can't reconnect a spirit like Alice Riley with, you know, her son. If he doesn't exist in this plane and he's existing in a whole different plane than her, you can't connect Especially those Especially if he two. found peace. Exactly. And moved on and he's not still around, you know, conjuring him back from peace is... That's, well, that's getting yeah. into really messy stuff that yeah. we as... Humans so, shouldn't be dabbling. Do with. we know? Oh, yeah. What were you I was say? just going to say it's it's very difficult because there are a lot of people who have prescriptions for helping spirits, um, moving spirits on, uh, doing those things, and it's that's a that's a tricky game because mm-hmm. it's very difficult to to know the full and lasting effects of our interference with whatever spiritual journey they happen to be on. Um, I I promote the idea that. If you can offer empathy, sympathy to a spirit, you it'll go a long way. But um, I see a lot of combative people who are trying to just force spirits out or try to, you know, trick spirits mm-hmm. or things mm-hmm. like that. It's it's a very difficult uh, road to travel trying to get a spirit to move on when we're not 100% sure what key things keep the spirit in place. Gotcha. Um, so... Do we know where William Wise's house was exactly on Hutchinson Island? Like, do we? Is there any way to know? Because I would love to know if that area is haunted by William Wise. Because well, he also, you know, he, uh, he would be considered, I would think, a malevolent spirit. I think that he would be there trying to, you know, potentially hurt people. He was a bad, bad guy. I mean, he's a rapist. He was so the issue with a bad dude. Hutchinson Island, too, is because it was kind of an unincorporated area of Savannah's colony. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know. It, you, we'd really have to do some digging into, like, artifacts that are probably not accessible to the public. Um, the only way you could really tell is if there was some kind of mapping out of what it was, because it was owned by General Oglethorpe, so he might have had some kind of, con- I guess, construction plan of what it would have looked like, where the like there, um, groundskeeper house is and yeah, things like say, that. There was a belief that the dock on the um, western side of the bridge... The first dock that you come across, it's a yeah. very little ramshackle little dock that the okay. tugboats oftentimes yeah, tie yeah, off to. Yeah. That that was the site of the dock to the um, cattle. Oh, ranch. And, he, and he was the cattle and, guy. And yeah. so there's 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 speculation, but like Madison says, it's very difficult. Sure, um, you can't even get like really good detailed maps. Because a lot of the maps that you get of that period are planning maps, yeah. They're not even execution maps. They're not like yeah. the map of, well, this is what was here. It's like, this is what we're going to build. I was like, well, did you? Sure. Yeah. Sure we did. <laughs> yeah. Like, exactly. Yeah. Well, and it would be uh, on the other side of it as a spirit. It could be a little bit tricky to identify William Wise, mm. but also just because 
there was so much activity over on Hutchinson Island from the port industry. We were a major port for the colonies in America. Um, so you got so many different people coming and going through there. It's very easy for William Wise to possibly get lost in that mess of energy and residual haunting that could sure. be occurring there. Well, maybe I could go head over there and wear this bonnet that I'm wearing <laughs> and uh, dress up. A, yeah, dress uh, up in the full era era. accurate bonnet. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah it, is, like, it is. Do you like my pretty red beard? Yes. Yeah, and absolutely. I have a red beard. I have a bonnet. I can wear the Alice Riley costume and I can head over there and we can see if uh, we could evoke Oak Willie Wise. Oak Will- Willie Wise. I want to say, now that I think about it, there was a ghost hunting show trying to get off the ground in the 90s that went over to um, Hutchinson and on the east side of the Westin Resort was this little uh, slip of land that they claimed was super haunted, but they had no story behind it. Okay. They were just saying, let's go out to this place and, and they bring me along, and they're like, so what's the story here? And I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you got me. And they were very convinced that it was. And it was, uh, it's interesting because it it's the landing where they put the fireworks. Okay. For the, okay. For the yeah. July. Yes. So it's this little landing right there. And they were like, yeah, this, this place is haunted. And I want to say it was like one psychic and one investigator and one historian. Um, that show never went anywhere. But... They were, they were shooting what did a it, What did it, uh, was it like exported and put on, on TV? Oh, no. Or? No, no. Oh, they like were it just literally here, yeah, never went they anywhere. They were just filming. Uh, you, like there's some footage so out there. So many shows are filmed in Savannah that never make it to air because it's just one of those things. You know, it's a, it's a pretty competitive, and especially at that time, everybody was trying to be the next ghost uh, yeah. hunters, you know. Sure, they, sure. That was a, that was a big time for paranormal yeah. investigators. Absolutely. Okay. Well, it, and that's why I say that that area is so confusing because it's not well documented. Mm. It's very possible it could have been from the slave trade. It could have been pirates. It could have been cattle farmers. It could have been so many things over there. But they didn't care about the unincorporated land. They had a whole colony they were building. So you sure. Know. And um, with with Richard White, just going, just just mm-hmm. wanted to talk about him. Um, are, is there any evidence that he haunts um, Wright Square where he was uh, executed? Or, like, is there any evidence of Richard, Richard White at all haunting Savannah? I it, mean... That's a difficult yeah. one. Because um, there's and, so many ghosts. You Again, it's just... Yeah. <laughs> well, and his story has just never been as essential to retell you know people are do not spend a lot of time uh addressing richard white gotcha uh because he's just the guy who was executed Mm -hmm. okay right away yeah you know it it was the contrast that you know they were both convicted but richard white was uh like immediately executed and um and then alice scott alice got the the term of her pregnancy Mm -hmm. to live okay and and um, my next question is, do you think that because there are tour now Alice Riley, you know, is an extremely extremely well known famous story here in Savannah. All ghost tour guides tell it, and mm-hmm. they tell it in Wright Square. Oh yeah. What, what do you think that is that like a form of like torturing a spirit almost by like talking about them so much that they have to stay they have to stay there they don't get any rest and they have to constantly haunt. I mean, like, is it Alice? Is it messed up that we that okay. we tell tell the story so much, or do, do you think she likes it? Well, so there is the concept of. Feeding the ghosts, as Chris puts it. Feeding the ghosts. Feeding the ghosts. (laughs) Yeah, where you're giving it all that energy and recognition that's keeping it here. But at the same time, Alice has probably had so many opportunities to move on. I don't think she wants to move on anyway. She wants to find her baby. Exactly. She has. And there's evocation. You know, telling a story, telling a ghost story evokes the ghost. And, um, And the beauty is... 
she does not have to work hard anymore yeah. because people talk about her. She does yeah. not have to work for recognition. She does not have to work to be seen or heard or felt because people remember her. They actively remember her. And the act of remembering a spirit does alleviate the pressure of existence. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They don't have, she, doesn't oh, have to, okay. she doesn't have to feed off of you because yeah. you're, you're a spoon feeder. You're feeding the ghost. You're giving the ghost all the attention it needs. She's a very rich ghost. She, she is. is. Yeah, she She's is. a very wealthy. Because whenever I go into Wright Square, I constantly, the first thing I think of, I know it's weird because I don't know, but like the first thing I think of is Alice Riley. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. I mean, I think that's a lot of Savannians. Mm-hmm. Well, and, you know, and that, that happens all over the world. Like, you yeah. know, think of uh, Bobby, the, the dog from Edinburgh from Greyfriars Kirkyard. Oh, yeah. You know, people report seeing Bobby still to this day because people love a ghost dog. You know, it's not that Bobby didn't want to pass on or whatever, but he had a whole statue. People he likes are, all the sticks. Yes. Yeah, yeah, people literally are actively leaving offerings at yeah. his statue yeah, yeah, yeah. and petting leave, his nose, sticks. you know, yeah. um, for good luck and things like that. So it's that same kind of concept of it's not that we're keeping the ghosts here necessarily. It's just. But they are tethered by our stories. Sure. Absolutely. Sure. For sure. All right. Well, I think that we can do an episode on uh, Tomochichi uh, for sure. But Madison, since we're talking about Wright Square, I know you love to tell this story. And it is an important story to tell for all the people that go to Wright Square and see this big monument. You know, go ahead and yeah. what, do, what do you so, so It has nothing to do with Alice Riley. It has oh, to, everything to do with Wright Square. So Chief Tomochichi who was the chief of the Yamacra Native Americans, when he passed away, basically General Oglethorpe had commissioned a ballastone pyramid in his honor to sit on top of his grave, which was in Wright Square. But the issue was, because of the racist nature of the time period, all the other monuments got taken care of, but his did not at all. And it became so overrun in, uh, by weeds and grass, and it just kind of became an eyesore. They decided to tear it down, and they built a new monument for somebody totally different. And the problem was, is they um, gave Chief Tomochichi this rock in the other side of... It is a rock. It is literally a rock, and that is it. And then they gave um, the Gordon family a big like uh, monument in the center of the square where Chief Tomochichi's monument was. So there's a whole lot wrong with that in, to begin with. Um, for one, moving someone's grave. Um, for two, uh, tearing down a monument, something to honor the dead. Big no-no. For three, giving them something way lesser for such an important person in life. Big no-no. Um, but even the Gordon family didn't want the monument. Nellie Gordon actively fought against that construction because she believed that Chief Tomochichi deserved a better monument. Um, She actually wrote in her will, she will pay to have the Gordon Monument removed so that Chief Tomochichi could have a new monument built, but the city said no. They denied her wishes in her will to actively keep the monument there. So I think that also just brings a whole lot of negative energy to the square on top of it because of how many wrong things happened with so just many. that one monument. Oh, yeah. And, and to make matters worse, Tomochichi became kind of a weird um, joke of a ghost mm-hmm. because uh, sometimes you'll see people running around Tomochichi's rock. Um, they'll run around it backwards shouting Tomochichi Because according to urban legend, if you run around it three times backwards and shout out Tomochichi, he'll appear, uh, which is just very uh, ludicrous, (laughs) ludicrous and and disrespectful. And it, you know, I always call Tomochichi like the Charlie Brown of historic figures, because it's like you know Nathaniel Green gets an obelisk and the Gordons get this Mm -hmm. beautiful monument and Oglethorpe gets a statue, but Tomochichi got a rock. Literally, like, like what are they saying with the rock? I don't know. Maybe we shouldn't get well, into and, it. Well, and it's worth but. noting, just as a side note, Savannah doesn't have rocks. You know, we're, yeah. uh, so it's a yeah, weird yeah. monument on top that. of that. It's like we don't yeah. have rocks. We don't have stones. We're, you know, uh, we're marshy. And so we, we just don't have big rocks. So it's, it's yeah. really weird because it's not representative or indicative of 
uh, the Yamacross. It's not indicative of the region. It's not indicative of, you know, it's, it's so bizarre and it's an unhewn rock. It's just like, you know, this weird shaped boulder. Literally. <laughs> just sitting there with a little plaque on it. Mm-hmm. And you're like, oh, and in the middle of Bright Square is a placard that says, somewhere in this square lies Tomochichi. And it's like, how, what? Yeah. You're just going to say somewhere? It's how did somewhere. you lose a body? Yeah. Like, yeah. what? And so. There used to be a big marker. Why didn't you, like, at least put a, you know, a marker down? Okay, this is where it is. Well, and especially because that is so disrespectful in the sense of even the belief system of the Yamacra Native Americans that tied such an important um, aspect of their beliefs to your final remains and your sacred burial objects. For them to lose his body is just like a big like slap in the face to the culture, yeah. which says a lot about that time period, to be quite honest. But... Yeah, I can I can get very intense about this subject. I, but I know, I know you. Yeah, can. he deserved better. He deserved better, absolutely. You know, and he was he was like a super tall guy, right? Yeah. Like, well, he was allegedly seven feet tall, which is odd to begin yes. with. Yeah. So yes, and it's interesting because I, I I oftentimes think about the the mention of of his enormous height may have been a reflection of the respect that he commanded, mm-hmm. you know, there is, you know, there's a chance that he was very tall, but I mean, yeah, seven feet tall, that would be a uh, tremendous, you know, uh, yeah. certainly in the 1700s. Sure, Absolutely. Yeah. But yeah. yeah. And a lot of people like to place Chief Tomachichi with a lot of different spirits around Savannah. It's true. You know, especially because of his height. Some people like to say the spirit in the basement of the Sorrel Weed House is Chief Tomochichi. Some you people, yeah, some people say that. Wait, could it be? Because I'm sure he wasn't a, like a, a bad guy, mm-hmm. uh, um, but the, the, the Sorrel Weed House spirit is a bad spirit. So could Depends that Depends on which really one you're be? talking about. The one, the one, the one <laughs> yeah. that attacks people. So that spirit, and Sorrow Weed is probably a, a different show for a different date, but it's worth noting that there are much more uh, intricate ties to... Sure. Uh, yeah, there's a lot more intricate ties to different figures that you can... Because you can, even uh, Francis Sorrel isn't a prize at the end of the day. Mm-hmm. Gotcha. I am. Well, with Chief, or Chief Tomachichi, I mean... Some people believe they've seen him wandering around Savannah looking lost or aimless because they, some people believe he can't rest until he finds his remains or things of that nature. That could be very true. Um, be. So you never know. But um, with that being said, on that very sad ending of <laughs> a note with Wright Square, I mean, it is a beautiful square to visit and it does have a lot of history, but we do like to sometimes acknowledge the darker history of Savannah and Bright Square is a great place to get into that. So Bright Square is a woefully haunted place because of injustice mm-hmm. and uh, and tragedy. Absolutely, but uh, we're going to go ahead and wrap things up a little bit. Thank you guys so much for joining us for this discussion. As always, uh, make sure to follow us on social media at the Savannah Underground on TikTok and Savannah Underground on Instagram. Also, please feel free to leave us questions that you might have under our Q&A button on TikTok. Um, We come through that every week, so that way we can answer your questions. And um, so feel free to utilize that as much as you would like. But also keep an uh, ear out for more content from us. We upload every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday. So lots of fun stuff coming at you all soon. But with that, I'm Madison Timmons. I'm Chris Susie, And stay spooky, y'all.